Uh, and I'll start the live transcript if I can as well. There we go. All right. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the July 6th uh, Chaos Badging meeting. It's good to have all of you here. We had uh, last, our last meeting was off because we had a little break. So I don't think we've had this meeting for about a month, which is totally fine. Uh, it's good to see everybody. And just so you all know, uh, you know, Elizabeth is on a break right now. So she's on vacation. I think she bought a house and is <laughs> like moving and all that kind of, if you call that vacation. <laughs> so she's doing that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I do think she's, you know, still reachable, but nonetheless, it's, I don't think she's going to be here for a few weeks. So I'll facilitate this meeting. Um, I think this is a pretty small group of people, or at least a tight group of people. Um, so I think we can kind of facilitate by committee oftentimes, if that would be okay with everybody. Um, but would anybody like to, to volunteer to facilitate the meeting in two weeks? Again, we can always kind of do it together, but... I should be able to in two weeks. Okay, that'd be great. Thanks, Katie. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and I'll share my screen. We can get to the agenda. It's a fairly light agenda today. There, there are a few things that I wanted to bring up. Um, so for those of you that were at the reviewer appreciation, that was I thought that was really sweet. Uh, I, I like that a lot. Uh, so thanks for that. We're uh, still kind of doing things. We're trying to, um, we're going to do cards, you know, like thank you cards. And I'm getting getting some uh, gifts that I'd like to send out to reviewers as well from the Chaos Project. We've done this kind of in the long, we were doing it for podcasts. So like if we had podcast guests, we'd send a little thank you card. We're going to do this also for the reviewers. Um, so anyway, thanks for that. That was a great success. And we learned how to draw donuts if, if you were there. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. Um, so outreach to events. Um, you know, I don't, I think we talk about this quite a bit. Do we have anybody want to make a comment on this or? I have something. We talked about this a little bit last year, or at least a lot earlier this year. Um, with hoping that we could, instead of reaching out individually to events, we could possibly focus more on social media and targeting social media to the right places so it can grow more organically and have a little bit more hands-off um, direct messages. I like that. So um, like just kind of like from chaos or um well even a, even from this group a, so, um a set of social media messages that we can send out regularly and or like post twitter and linkedin so that using the appropriate hashtags we can get things out and we're not okay. creating an email list and sending emails to the same people 20 times over that's a good idea i like that and i think with the with Elizabeth and Ruth doing Chaos Africa and Chaos on Twitter too, we can get some some good promotion. Um, Katie, do you think that we should like kind of prescribe those messages? Uh, I think if we did um, a little bit of like a social media tool where we give it was just a toolkit for our for our team here, where we just have a set of um suggest we had kind of worked on it last year at some point i can't remember when it was but it came up with kind of a template um social media post and we're um working on okay how we could implement that and um get that out there. Like when we first started talking about changing it more to social media outreach, we made that template. And now I'm trying to remember, I remember we drafted it out and In brought, this group? It this, brought it to this group and 
I'll maybe. just search through Slack. I think we might have had a brainstorm session on Slack at some point somewhere. Okay. So maybe I could, could I put you as an action item just to kind of see what we might have? Let's see if I can find it because then, but otherwise I remember that, um, I wonder if I was, Ruth would know a lot more about this. I might have actually been talking with her. Okay, maybe send her a note, or I can send her a note to just in Slack or something. Okay. Great. Thanks, Katie. I think that's a good idea. All right. Um, badging website. Does anybody know? Oh, well, there's Ruth. Actually, Ruth is coming in right now, Katie, to the meeting. Yeah, that would be good. I'll ask. So we'll let, hey, Ruth. Hi, I made it before 30 minutes. Okay. Hi, everyone. Yeah. We, have, we did have a question for you, actually, that Katie was going to send you in Slack. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm here now. So we had last year, I believe, talked about um, a social media post that could be kind of a templated outline that we could all post to our own social medias to increase badging participation instead of doing the one on one. Mm -hmm. And we come up with some sort of a template at one point, but I'm trying to remember now what it was. And I'm searching yeah. through old Slack yeah. messages to see if was I... it on a document? I think it was on a document. Like a shared document. Yeah, I think so. Let me try to find it. Mm. I only see the sheets. Because I remember working with somebody on it at one point. Yeah, I was I it remember. you or was it Elizabeth? It might have been Elizabeth. Yeah, I I I do vividly remember that there was a a, a social media template. I'll try to find that in my documents uh, on Google Docs. You know, we did do something. Oh yeah. I also remember that I posted whatever we'd come up with on LinkedIn. So I don't think I've been that active on LinkedIn this year. Let me see if I can just find it in my okay. history. If you can find it, Katie or Ruth, maybe yeah. just put it back into the minutes here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, badging website. I'll just move on to the next thing. The badging website. Um, yeah, I did put that there. Okay. Do you want to make a comment on that, Ruth? Yeah, sure. So I was kind of thinking if we, we it would be nice for us to have like a website to, you know, like a website outside of chaos um, to, you know, showcase one thing to be nice to showcase the different conferences we've badged and kind of like showcase our, um, our process. And, you know, I think it would be a reference. It would also help in like, SEO, I know we, we wanted to do, um, you know, SEO stuff as well. Um, so badging comes up on search. Um, you could also help with that. So I was thinking we want to, you know, start that. Yeah, um, we could. So obviously, you know, the, the big list that we have just in GitHub, obviously. Yeah. Um, could has anybody ever done github pages before you know like how you can do a website on github you know i'm talking about i think i've tried yeah i think i've tried that once i think i've tried <laughs> i think i tried it once too um because there are two options maybe one would be as we're doing the website redesign we could certainly ask or include a badging page on the chaos.community site. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
or as a page yeah that, that that makes a lot of sense as a page yeah we could totally do that um the other is we could you know how we have the badging repo it's not chaos we could maybe set up github pages there i think the two of them works let me um i'm actually kind of curious about pages let me take a look at that ruth yeah sure. and i was also hoping like i think part of my um part of the idea is to like something chaos africa could work on so mm -hmm. let me see if i can't set up like a really really simple github page you know what i mean that doesn't have much content in it but could maybe serve as a starting point yeah sure that the, makes sense okay and the reason i guess the reason i like github pages a little bit is um it, it would be a little independently managed by this group. Yeah, and everybody kind of like has access to it. Yeah, exactly. Change stuff easily. <laughs> yeah, I don't, right, because like, it's so dynamic. We do need to yeah. change things pretty often. And yeah, always working through like Kevin or whomever is running the WordPress site can take a little time. Yeah, so I think I think GitHub pages okay. would be a good option. Okay, let me um let me take a look and I'll bring that forward in two weeks. Okay, no problem. Okay, cool, that's a good idea. Um, okay, great. Um, I did want to take a look. Let me stop share for a second. Um, hold on. Let's see, I'll share my screen again. I just wanted to make sure. Do so, Ruth, right now with Elizabeth on vacation, you're kind of watching. Yeah. The submissions, is that right? Yeah, I am. Okay. And there are we good right now with submissions? Yeah, that there, there are no submissions currently, so we're good. Okay, okay cool. Um okay. And then April twenty fifth. We have one PR. Mm, let me see. Do you know what this is? I think you also change some of the content on the um on this on the application oh it looks like it was it's for the checklist yeah oh the checklist for virtual events yeah and then like a regular it was just like change i add more context you know like code of conduct you know was a okay. an acronym and then just it was not really major changes. Just like clarity for clarity. Yeah, clarity. it looks like it's mostly, yeah, just clarity changes. Yeah, we had an issue, I think the last conference um, we badged, there was some issue where the applicant was, did not have, was uh, kind of confused. I see, Kevin. okay. You know, like, okay, can we try to make this clearer for them to- Okay has more of this change. So this seems like it's an okay. Yeah, I think we can go ahead and merge it actually. Okay, I'll do that. Ticket, it looks like most of it is just like, see how, I don't know if you can see my screen, but like 34, yeah, like so. that's, seems like one was added ticket cost. Do you see this? Oh yeah, ticket, at least one available. Oh yeah, ticket. I don't think I can remember us having that conversation about ticket cost though. But this is something <laughs> this is something I do not really understand if diversity access tickets do not guarantee access to every event to every part. I'm trying to understand ticket the ticket cost part. Yeah, ticket cost to me seems like a like money. <laughs> Yeah. Um, 
Okay, I think I think I do get it a little bit. I know with Linux Foundation events like for mm-hmm. OSS EU, um, yeah. or the bigger one, I think sometimes you don't have access to other mini events. I see. Yeah, so I think this is what this is speaking to. So like you would apply to OSS EU and you can go to all the ancillary events. Yeah. Like all I'm of them. Just, okay. Not just one one okay. little part of the event. Okay. Or maybe for example, workshops in smaller conferences, maybe, or for example, for smaller conferences, um, a diversity access ticket is not restricted or for workshops that happen in the conference. I right? see, but not the yeah. conference itself. Yeah. Okay. So is cost the right word then? Hmm, that's like the thing. Ticket, cost. ticket access or something? Yeah. yeah, ticket access. Might be a little bit better. Yeah, more clear. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so maybe Maybe I'll make just a comment. Yeah. that makes sense okay and if um i know he's moving right now um maybe if if we don't hear back by then in two weeks we can just make that change <laughs> yeah i think we can make it directly if we don't hear yeah. back okay we could just we could almost just like yeah okay that sounds good okay great so it looks like we're good on issues and prs um all right. Any other comments so far? Yeah. Okay. Come, like on the next topic or on the. You can either you can do either at this point. <laughs> okay. So I I think I was I I thought uh, maybe Enoch or I I think is it I used that's working on the budget bot and Enoch. Yeah. If I think we were expecting some updates, but I think they're not here. Okay. Maybe we could, um, let's see. And also referencing that conversation on Slack, where you put in about um, the bots, I think all the response from Ayush and how that could, maybe I could let me look for that conversation again. Okay. What is the what are the bots? What are the updates going on with the bots? Is it about assigning reviewers? Isn't that it? Yeah, like I think there was a time. Okay, it was Sean that put that in. Yeah. So um let me send the link to that conversation on Slack. It was about like creating an automation to know when the DI MD file that's for project budget. And okay. then I kind of like talked about implementing with the budget bots like tracking and tree GitHub API. Okay. Was yeah. it this was the badging bot was with yeah. Just project you, yeah with project budget. Okay. Just sent the link to gotcha. With the, I sent the link for stock and that. Yeah. I just directed to Slack, but Um, okay. Yes, so what, okay, I got you, I see it. So, um, 
So what were you, Ruth, were you in the community call yesterday? Yeah, yeah, I was. Okay, so um, uh, for Shabul and Anita and Katie too, I don't know if you were on the community call yesterday, um, but one of the, the things, this is now we're, we're talking about project badging here. Um, so the idea with project badging that we talked about up until this point was that we would ask projects to include that dei.md file and then basically um, reviewers would be assigned to that file to review you know just that, that the project is doing well with respect to the metrics that we ask them to attend to so that requires similar to the event badging, it requires a, a, a submission and a human review. What the proposal was in Slack, and this came up in the community call yesterday, was that we actually have two levels of badging. And the first level is there's no human review associated with it. And so, um, a project could earn like a very low level badge by simply having the DEI.MD file in their repository. And we could automate the process by which we identify that markdown file and make sure that the file itself contains the, the headers or the metrics that we ask for. The second level badging is then actually having somebody humanly review that DEI.MD file. Did I get that right, Ruth? I think that's how I understand it. Yeah, yeah, you did get that right. Uh, I think one thing is if we're, I think right now I don't, I don't, I haven't seen any project with a DEI.MD file. So maybe our, our the first step could be if they, it could explain how they observe like DEI. You know, that's, I haven't seen project that. No, they don't there. exist. These are our, that, that's our invention. <laughs> was, my audio was cutting out some yesterday uh -huh. during the call. I'm, and did I miss a point? I know that we had talked about um, either a completely hands-off or one that was um, human, but mm -hmm. had we talked, would that be two different tiers? I know we had yes. mainly talked about having one tier optioned, at least to begin with. Yeah, so I think, so the answer is yes, it would be two tiers. And this, the conversation that is occurring right now came from Sean talking with Demetrius Cheatham at GitHub. Oh. And so um, up until that point, we had only talked about asking projects to produce the DEI.MD file, and then we would humanly review it, period. And there was one level. Mm -hmm. That's done. the conversation I remember. Yes, and that, that's been the conversation. So then last week, or whenever Austin was, <laughs> 10 days ago or something, um, Sean had met with Demetrius and they talked about how could the project badging occur at scale, like at a much higher level than we could do with human review. And so to do that, we would have to automate part of the process or automate, automate it. And so then we would actually have a kind of a lower level badge that is not humanly reviewed. And the automation would simply look for the presence of a DEI.MD file. And it would investigate that file to make sure that there are the four headers, which are like, you know, inclusive leadership, you know, the, the metrics that we have, that the file actually contains the headers that we ask for. So were we talking about having a template file mm -hmm. and having the DEI.MD on GitHub? Yes. Okay, that 
if somebody just put the template in there, they would have the headers. True. I mean, that's true. Yes. I'm not saying this is a perfect situation. I understand. <laughs> I, <this> is, <laughs> I'm telling you what the conversation is. So you okay. are correct. If we provided a template and nobody did anything at that moment, the bot would be like, looks good because <laughs> there's the presence of this file and the headers exist. So therefore, you get, the, you get the lowest level badge. You get the like thumbs up badge. You know what I mean? When in fact, you've done nothing. So, so you bring up an important, <laughs> an important concern. <laughs> so, I mean, I understand what the hope is, is like to get projects to think about DEI within their projects, to do it at more than just one at a time, like what we can do with events, something like an, a fully automated process is a good thing. Yeah. Um, but then I also understand your point that you could put empty templates in there and and pass, which is a bad thing. <laughs> so could you think about this? I mean, you know what I mean? Just like put it in like uh, yeah. your thought process for maybe a couple yeah, of weeks. Trying to... Yeah. I think if I'm not like, I know that Matt um, and Knock are working on the badging bot. So would this be something similar then to creating another bot like that that yeah. would scan? Yeah. And I think the hope would be is that we could actually get GitHub involved. Oh. See what I'm saying? Bot. Yeah. So then the, the bot, it kind of exists on the GitHub platform. Okay. Um, and then it would kind of that whole first level badge would just be awarded via the GitHub, the GitHub environment. Okay. Yeah. So we just need to specify what the bot would need to look for and get them specifications. And once we get to the point of having that sort of a partnership with them. Yeah. And I mean, this is, you know, with Demetrius being at GitHub. I mean, that's, this is the hope here. Okay. Um, I mean, but what are your, what are your thoughts on even just doing this in the first place? I mean, I don't want to, like one of the, to me, one of the, I'm sorry, but like one of the real values of the event badging is the human element is, is the open and transparent review <laughs> that's occurring in an issue. And somebody's actually taking a look at the claims that are being made by event organizers and the conversation that occurs. Like that's a huge value. If a concern about a bot on a GitHub platform awarding it just as the ability for somebody to do it from GitHub is it takes chaos away from it. So mm -hmm. they're not receiving an email from chaos saying mm -hmm. you got this badge and then when they go look at the next level, they're like, but I just got this on this platform and a completely unrelated group wants to do a review of this. That's, like, that's a good, yeah, no, that's, that's fair. Yep. Like it separates it so much that that might be a GitHub badge, but that's not a chaos badge because we're not awarding it at that point. No, that's, that's a good point. The first level is like there, how about this? I'll just call it the bot level. <laughs> is not being awarded by chaos it would yep. be being awarded by github and that makes it not a chaos spec a chaos suggestion to github for new best practices but not a chaos badge oops um I like that. The, I like the point that you made as well, which was if they do receive the bot awarded badge 
and then we're like, you can up this badge by having it humanly reviewed. They might be like, I already got the badge. <laughs> like, why? Why do I need to go through an extra step to like no effort into getting it from a bot? Yeah, and why? Do, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I have a pretty sticker because I showed up. Why do I need to get a different color pretty sticker? Like yeah, I already. Yes, I already have the one. Where, where, in fact, even if I do the review, I might get my pretty sticker taken away because <laughs> somebody might look at my <laughs> yeah, exactly at my dei.md file and realize I have nothing in it. <laughs> okay, these are these are great points and certainly not to be solved today, but um, something to just for I think all of us to think about that first level with a bot where you could just click a button on github and say I want this sounds almost like a participation prize it does particularly when like if we have the headers for the if we have the well like it's kind of like the event event review right so we have obviously the headers that are the metrics fundamentally mm -hmm. But it's pretty common for us to have conversations about the content under the header. Like it's more than just participation. And that bot at least goes through and looks for the check marks and says like, oh, you have actually gone through and identified that you have completed this and you've checked off that you have these three or four mm -hmm. metrics. And so people actually have to physically go in as a person and identify mm -hmm. those things that they've done. And Yep. We're into submitting it. Yes, I agree. The, even if we had a first level that was a bot, mm -hmm. people had to go through a submission process. Like, yes, I, I do have this. Here is a link to my DEI.md file. Mm -hmm. And then maybe under that, the bot could see like, yes, I have included a section on XYZ, XYZ, and XYZ. Check, check, check. Mm -hmm. So just like we have our bot now doing counting the checks, it would count those checks and review that document. But it's a step that people have to physically go through. Which we we need. I, yes. Okay. So um, so thoughts. The submitter. Make sure I'm getting this right. Okay, Katie. Yeah, I'm watching. Submitter would have to not only include the DEI.md file, oops, but also complete like a series of checks. Yes, like a um, check thing drop of a checklist or a question checks. Yeah. Under each uh, metric, basically. Yeah, just like the badging. One the or bot, yes. yep, could um, could at least ensure that the checks are done. This would also prevent um, some sort of an automated bot from starting to submit a whole bunch of them. Mm hmm. Because. I don't know who would go to the time and effort to do something that silly, but um, if there was ever a bot that automated and just decided to um, like go through projects and find DEI.md files that nobody had ever submitted and just start sending them in to the get to a GitHub. I get you. If we make some the a human at least click a few things. <laughs> yeah, it's. I know that sounds far fetched, but you never know what people get bored and do with technology. <laughs> I know what my friends get bored and do with technology. So it's not that far fetched. I mean, what if we, like, I was thinking, listening to you talk to, what if, I mean, we could, the two levels could be like pending and passing. Like the bot is just, you're still at pending. I like that. And then it's like had that first level review. We know that it's there and it exists and it's ready for somebody to take a quick cursory glance at. Yes. And if you don't want to do the cursory glance, that's fine, but you're just going to be stuck at pending. You know what I mean? As a project. Yeah. And then 
if you go ahead and do the human review, then you do get a passing. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, so maybe... Somehow work it so the GitHub bot does a very well. Then again, going and having it submitted through GitHub it takes out the chaos. Any sort of the yeah, I would. I have had these conversations similar to this before, and I mean, one thing that that obviously can't happen, and this isn't even just with badging. This is just chaos as a project in general. Is we can't lose that branding. I 100% agree with you. This has to be, even if it's occurring through a GitHub platform, this clearly has to be, in this case, it would be a, a GitHub chaos thing. And that has to be fundamentally clear, you know, to is, me. Is GitHub and Linux Foundation affiliated? The together, those two of them? Yeah. GitHub, I'm sure, is a a large sponsor. Okay, I just didn't know. I know like Microsoft has GitHub stuff, but I didn't know if Linux Foundation had like a huge stake. Like if this was somehow I don't, I don't know about that. Closely affiliated with Linux Foundation because it is GitHub or something. I don't know. I don't think so. I think actually so the the connections that we have with um with Demetrius and GitHub is we've been like Sean, Elizabeth, and I have been helping with all in. It's just you and me on this call now, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we've been helping with all in, which is their, I don't know if you're familiar with all in. Yeah. So we kind of help start that with them. And so they have, they've been working over the last year on all in for students really heavily, which was helping identify students from HBCUs to to help them participate in open source and then get them connected with internships at organizations and that was a huge success last year and all in really has two parts so one was all in for students which like i said did really really well last year and then uh this year we're looking at all in for projects which is how can projects best center dei within the work that they do and so this is one component potential component of that that we've talked to Demetrius about um, in the past. So, and so now as we're looking at project badging, that kind of got off the ground as it was related to event badging. And I think it's, this is just now, can there be a connection between GitHub? I think primarily the all in project, you know what I mean? That GitHub kind of sponsors or is heavily involved in. Um, and if it's on, uh, also, if this is through chaos, uh -huh. and it has to be submitted through chaos instead of through um, GitHub, uh -huh. it doesn't make it seem as exclusionary if people have their projects on GitLab. That, yes, there is, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of truth to that as well. Because um, a lot of open source is on GitLab because it's not proprietary software. Yeah, no, because it's, yes, I, I, I hear you. Um, okay. That would, that would be my biggest concern is, oh, it's GitHub. This is going to be catered more toward corporations doing open source projects mm -hmm. and not individuals doing open source projects. Cause at least that's what I'm noticing right now is it seems like a lot of the companies that use GitHub internally for work already yeah. with their open source projects there. And what, yeah, these are, I think these are real, I like these concerns. Um, and like, like things to, like, I'm always struggling with, like, in, <laughs> like, in chaos, we only have so many people sometimes, and we're trying to think like scale and um, let me know how I can also help take and run with project badging. Okay. And, when you think about it too, I mean, you have really great ideas here, like concerns and thoughts. And like, we're obviously not gonna solve this like today in the next four minutes. <laughs> but these are good things to think about like on your walks or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just like how we can get this done. Cause there's, there's an interest. There's an interest from folks at GitHub. There's an interest in us, you know what I mean? We've had a lot of success in event badging. So clearly that's a, 
a great thing with chaos. And we're just trying to, it's like, we're just trying to balance all of our, our moving parts here. So maybe we can have a conversation with GitLab too. Yeah, I think we, we would need to. Because um, I used to have, I don't think Narizzi is there anymore. I used to have Narizzi Sanchez. I was wondering about her. Okay. She, I, she moved somewhere else. She's not at GitLab anymore, but she used to be in charge of their open source department. Okay. It, but I still have her as a contact. I can reach out to her if I need to and see if she has a new contact there. It me. doesn't seem like it'd be too hard to figure out who no. the person is at GitLab and have that conversation. So... All right, this is great. Um, so I think we have, let's, why don't we call it a day? Um, Katie, you were gonna look for some old social media stuff. I was poking at that. My Slack for, um, so it looks like I only got added to Chaos Slack earlier this spring. Okay. So it's not gonna be on Slack. I'm trying to figure out where in the world it would be. I think that, um, Anita or Ruth, um, oh, Ruth dropped Anita's yeah. here. We'll find uh, it. Anita, do you have any thoughts on where that might be or what it is, or do we just need to create some new social media? We might just need to create some new ones. <laughs> it might be time just to create some new ones now that the program has also developed more. Yeah, Anita. A new one and work towards it because finding that particular one might be um, difficult. Mm -hmm. All right, well, maybe in two weeks, I don't know if you could maybe make one or two, you know, like sample Katie. Yeah, I'm at, what, I think Ruth is always kind of on most of our social media. I'm super okay. about social media outreach. That's one of my super weaknesses. Well, I then just, I really on it. Okay. Anita, did you want to take it? Oh, I said great. I something. Okay, great. If you could bring that to the next meeting, that would be really cool. Thank you. All right. I can always locate hashtags and figure out which hashtags work best, but I'm really bad at creating social media content. No problem. Um, and then I'm going to take a look at GitHub pages as a way for the website, badging website to show off. And then um, like I'm familiar with GitLab pages, not GitHub pages. Say what? I'm familiar with GitLab oh, pages okay. and GitHub pages. I'll, I'm I'm kind of curious about GitHub pages, and so I'll I'll see what I can do. And then badging, I think just it's it's just think about these things, think about the concerns and the thoughts, and how we can move this forward positively with all the cool like things that we could maybe the resources and people we know and all that kind of stuff to to help move this forward. So cool. Uh, well, that's it. We're at the end of time. Thank you, everybody. It was good to see you, see you all. I will see you probably here in a little bit. Yeah, I'll see you at 10 o'clock, my time, anyway. Okay. Yeah, same here. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.